brothers and sisters very often we have found this code being labeled by scientific class that science and spirituality never the twain shall meet we think that science and spirituality are all together different totally different poles apart realms of knowledge but is it so is it so let us start with an activity today let me tell you assure you that this is not going to be a lecture this is going to be a workshop full of activities full of experiments so let us start with our first activity for this i need just one sister volunteer to hold this mic for me sister please hold this mic we have right here a strip of paper everybody can see this right this strip has two sides side 1 and side 2 even if i make a ring out of it it still has two sides inside and outside but if i give a bit twist to this paper and paste it like this what do i get i'll get a figure like this something like this now let me ask you how many sides this figure has come on how many sides this figure has come on answer should come from your side believe me this figure has only one side now only one side if i take a sketch pen and start sketching right from one point and without lifting a pen i keep on sketching 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 like this sketching sketching i land up again to the same point from where i started that means if i paint from one side as green and another side is red then at one point i will paint upon each other this clearly shows thank you sister this clearly shows that this figure has now one side means side 1 has overlapped on side 2 and side 2 has overlapped on side 1 this is called synthesis this is called synthesis between side 1 and side 2 same is the story with science and spirituality they seem to us as two different sides two different realms of knowledge but with a simple slight twist in understanding with slight twist in comprehension we will surprisingly find that they tend to overlap each other they are one ohm is equal to mc square means science will lead us to spirituality and spirituality will lead us to science synthesis is possible let me honestly confess here brothers and sisters that i did not have the sense of comprehension the sense of twist it is only has been blessed to me by the grace of his holiness ashutosh mare ji which i would love to share with you all today and to prove the synthesis between science and spirituality to show this overlapping between science and spirituality we will take up certain streams of science today and talk about them let us first start with mathematics how many of you are mathematics students here raise your hands okay let us start with mathematics mathematics has a very very mysterious figure it has a very mysterious figure which is what is this somebody said this is 8 it is infinity infinity has you know very magical properties do you know about the magical properties of infinity infinity plus infinity is equal to infinity this is a magical property of infinity second property of infinity if we have a set one an infinite set 1 comma 2 comma 3 
till infinity. This is an infinite set. 1, 2, 3, till infinity. Let's take another infinite set 2, which is 1, sorry, 2, comma 4, comma 6, comma 8, till infinity. This is also an infinite set, right? Now, if we extract this infinite set 2 from infinite set 1, what we will get? What we will get? What you will get? Yes, we will again get an infinite set 3, which is 1, 3, 5 till infinity. So here we have got a tremendously powerful pro property, mathematical, pro mathematical property of infinity, that if we subtract infinity from infinity, what we get? Again infinity. A beautiful magical property that leads us to a profound spiritual concept. In our spiritual lingo, infinity has been equivalent to punatva, completeness, fullness. It points to that complete personality, to that supreme consciousness whom we call as Brahma. Rig Veda says, Om Poonamada, Poonamidam, Poonat Poonat Muddachyate. Poonasse Poonamadaya, Poonameva Vashishyate. Means that supreme consciousness, that Brahma is infinite, Poon, full, complete. And out of that fullness, fullness emerges. And even if we take out fullness from fullness, what is left? Fullness remains. That means infinity minus infinity is equal to infinity. So here we can see that a gross infinity of mathematics, academic mathematics today, has led us to such a profound spiritual, divine infinity of spiritual science that is Brahma Gyan. Let us take up another figure of mathematics. This is, what is this? What do you call this? Zero. Zero is again very enigmatic, very mysterious. Why? Because zero appears to us ekdam khali, something, not, nothingness, absolute vacuum. This is what we think zero is all about. But do you know zero has such a vast and great potential? You add to zero, you add zero to any number. It gets quantified how many times? Ten times. You connect zero to any other number twice, two times. That number will get quantified hundred times. Such is the potential of zero. Now with a slight twist in understanding again, let us see that how the zero leads us to the supreme and the higher most absolute zero of the universe. And what is that absolute zero? It is Brahm again. Jaha hamare Upanishadon mein, Brahm ke liye, super consciousness ke liye, universal consciousness ke liye, infinity use kiya gaya, punatva use kiya gaya. At the same time, for that supreme consciousness, universal consciousness, our rishis say, Om Kham Brahm, means that Brahm is Shunya, absolute zero, total vacuum. This is Brahm. This reminds me of a very beautiful anecdote given in one of our Upanishads named Chandogya Upanishad. I need one brother volunteer to demonstrate the story of that Upanishad here. Any one brother, any one brother, please volunteer. There's so many brothers sitting. No volunteer here? Come on, any one of you. You come. You come, brother. You come. Okay. Now in this Upanishad, Chandogya Upanishad, there is a sage, a rishi named as Uddyalak. He calls out to his son, his name is Shwet Ketu. So brother, for a while, you are Rishi Kumar Shwet Ketu. All right? Okay, come. Now, that rishi calls out to Shwet Ketu, his son, and says, son, go and pluck one fruit from the tree. Now brother, you also, pick up one fruit from the table. He is Rishi Kumar Shwet Ketu for a while, right? So bring, and also a knife. Rishi further states that, son, Shwet Ketu, you slice this fruit into two halves. Brother, you also slice it into two equal halves. 
Now Rishi further instructed the son and asked, Kimmatra Pashyasi, what do you see inside it? What do you see inside it? And Shwet Ketu said, Seed. Can you see seed inside it? Yes. Take it out. Rishi further instructed Shwet Ketu, Son, now slice this seed into two halves. So, brother, you also, you have dropped the seed. Now slice this seed, keep the fruit, give me the fruit. Now you slice this, give me the fruit. Now you slice this seed into two halves. And on slicing the seed into two halves, Uddyalak, Rishi Uddyalak, he has lost the seed. Rishi Uddyalak further asked his son, Kimmatra Pashyasi, what do you see inside the seed? And what Shwet Ketu said? Anybody? What did Shwet Ketu say? Nothing. Nothing. Kuch nahi. Can you see, see anything inside? Brother, leave it. Okay. Now, there is nothing inside this seed. Go back to your seat. Thank you very much. There is nothing inside the seed. That's what Shwet Ketu said. And now what Sage Uddyalak, father says to his son. He says, Sir, dear son, Jise tu kuch nahi keh raha, Veh sab kuch ka sroth hai. What you call as nothing is actually the source of everything under the sun and even beyond the sun. That is the derivation made by one of our rishis. He said, out of this emptiness, out of this shunya, out of this nothingness, entire huge banyan tree will emerge. And out of this emptiness, out of this shunyatva, the entire cosmos is, will emerge, has emerged and will keep on emerging. This shunyatva is Brahm, that universal consciousness. So meticulously, beautifully proved by our rishis, rishis, ancient rishis of India, that absolute zero is universal consciousness. So here also we can find that how a gross zero, a zero-based mathematics name, gross mathematics name, how it led us to a higher mathematics of consciousness, supreme consciousness, Brahmagyan. Again, we can see with a slight twist in understanding. The synthesis has been brought between academic mathematics today and spiritual mathematics of Brahmagyan. Now let us take up another subject, robotic science and artificial intelligence. I need two brother volunteers to demonstrate. Brothers, please come. Okay, you will play again? Come. Okay, we have two brother volunteers with us. Imagine that you are in an artificial intelligence research laboratory right you are the scientist right and he is your robotic clone he is your android do you understand what android is ye aapke robotic clone hai jo aapne is laboratory mein design kiye hain aap hi ke carbon copy clone robotic clone right now what artificial intelligence does robotic clone is ready with us the hardware is ready now what we must do the second step let us install software in him. Let us install software in him. And I have with me two softwares. I have with me two softwares. Brother, you install this knowledge database, your IQ, intelligent quotient in him. Fix the CD anywhere inside him, in pocket or sh shirt, wherever. OK, good. Now I have memory database with me. Install this software as well into him. He's a robotic clone, right? Install. OK. So we can say, now, is your robotic clone ready? Brothers and sisters, can we replace this robotic clone with him? Can we replace him with him? Let me ask you one thing. Is it enough to sustain life? Is it enough to have just logical, logic-based programming. He is logically programmed, right? But what I mean to ask is, is there any feature inside this brother, inside this living scientist, which is missing in him? Is there any feature? What is that feature? Emotions, absolutely wonderful. Emotions, emotional quotient. And above all, and one more thing, Consciousness, spirit, chetana, this is missing in him. But the problem is that neither can we measure emotions, nor can we measure consciousness. 
I remember once my revered Gurudev saying to someone that you can measure the volume of a tear. You can also measure the salt content of a tear, but you cannot measure the warmth of the emotion behind that tear. So emotions are immeasurable. And similarly, consciousness is also not quantifiable. Can we quantify consciousness? For example, if I keep this pen here, and I ask this scientist brother, if I keep this pen here and ask this scientist brother to come and lift this pen, now, brother, be there. Now, we are not sure which route his consciousness will follow. Whether he'll come from this way, this way, this way, this way, this way, this way, or which way. There are n number of possibilities that his consciousness, n number of routes that his consciousness can take. n number of permutations and combinations are possible. And therefore, no logistics, no algorithm, no programming can ever be made for consciousness. Aap koi programming kari nahi sakte consciousness ki. Because there are infinite n number of possibilities. How will you quantify? How will you make a software? And therefore, no executable software can be made for the consciousness. And therefore, this clone will always remain an automaton, a machine with a limitation. And this is also the limitation of artificial intelligence, our robotic sciences today. That is the limitation. And this limitation further leads us. It leads us to a higher science of consciousness. Don't you think so? This robotic science, uh, this artificial intelligence is leaving before us a hanging pointer, which has to further connect to some higher science of consciousness. And that is none other than spirituality, science of Brahma Gyan. So here also we see that how robotic science has to synthesize with spiritual science. Thank you, brothers. Please go back to your seat. Please give them a big hand. Thank you. Now, let us move on to third subject, third science subject, psychology, science of mind. A humanist, a famous humanist, Carl Rogers, he gave one very famous theory called self theory. According to self theory, it states that in every individual, there are two selves. Hum sab ke andar do tarike ke, do types ke selves hote hain. One is the present self. You can see the demonstration now. One is the present self. And another is the ideal self. In every individual, we have two selves. One is the present self and another is the ideal self. Present self refers, refers to your current state of being, your current personality. What you are today. Aap aaj jaise ho, wo present self hai aapka. And ideal self represents your perfect personality. What you want to be someday. Aap jaisa ek din banna chahate ho, wo aapka ideal self hai. Now, self theory further states that more these two selves are farther to each other, the more will be the anxiety, the more will be the restlessness, complexities suffered by you. But if, on the contrary, the more your these two selves are closer to each other, are in communion to each other, the more will be the happiness, sense of satisfaction enjoyed by you. You live life in fullness. And if these two selves merge upon each other, harmonize completely, completely, then psychology assures you that you will be altogether a fully functioning personality. Fully functioning personality. Now, here lies the problem. Psychology assures you that if your two selves will merge, you will be a fully functioning personality. But at the same time, psychology fails to tell you how this perfect harmony is possible. No psychoscience, no model, no diagram has yet been developed in psychology that can help you in this perfect harmony. Thank you, brothers. This reminds me of a very interesting story, Panch Tantra kind of story. Once there was a king of birds named Ukab. A crow went to Ukab and complained, cried out his heart to him, said, Oh, king of birds, 
Look at me, my desolated state. You know, every bird in, a king, in your kingdom is a friend to quail. But nobody seems to be interesting, interested in me. What shall I do? Crow cried. Then he suggested, he said, Ukabji, I suggest you, please give me also the status of quail. Make me quail. Ukab agreed. He said, okay, from now onwards, dear crow, you will be quail. I rename you as quail. Now what happened? Crow felt happy, he rejoiced, he flew and went up on the branch where other fellow birds were sitting. And here, the moment he sat, what he did, as was his innate nature, he started saying, cow, cow, I am coil, cow, cow, hey, I am coil. So the moment all other birds listened to his shrilly cow, cow, what they did? They flew away to save their soul. Now the crow was again desolated. He came back to Ukab and complained, Oh king, look at this, what is this? Despite your declaration, nobody valued me as coil. What is this? Now Ukab gave a hearty laugh. And what he said? He said, my poor crow, my poor friend, I'm sorry. What shall I do? I made you coil. I can only give you the status of coil. But I cannot give you the state of coil. I can rename you as coil, but I cannot fill your throat with melodious and sweet songs of coil. What shall I do? I am helpless. Brothers and sisters, similar is the helplessness. Similar is the apathy of today's present day psychoscience, modern science, psychoscience. Today's psychology, modern psychology tells you what you should be. Tells you what should be your status, but psychoscience cannot give you that state of being. Psychoscience can tell you that you must harmonize two selves, but psychoscience cannot help you in harmonizing these two selves. That is the apathy. And therefore, this leads us, un this, this, Im there from here emerges an unavoidable urge to synthesize a higher psychoscience which can deal with what? Which can help us in harmonizing these two selves. And that psychoscience, higher psychoscience of consciousness, harmonizing consciousness with the lower self is none other than Brahmagyan. Let us see how Brahmagyan, the supreme psychoscience, can help you in harmonizing these two selves. Again, we'll play, we'll demonstrate an Upanishadic model here. This model is a tree model which is given in one of our Upanishads named as Mundaka Upanishad. Mundaka Upanishad states that there is a huge tree in a forest and on that huge tree sit, sit two charming birds. Two beautiful charming birds of golden plumage are sitting on this tree. One of these birds is sitting on the topmost, topmost branch of the tree, magnificently sitting, quiet in himself. And the other bird of this tree is the lower bird, jumping on lower branches. Now, let us demonstrate the model here. Where are our charming birds? Brothers, please come again. So, here we can see, you are the present self, right? So, you are the lower bird. He is the lower bird who is jumping from branch to branch, okay? Now, he is the ideal self, it means he is the higher bird who is sitting magnificently on the topmost branch of the tree. Now, what tree model further states? It states that when this lower bird is jumping on lower branches and, he, and, it, and it encounters a sweet fruit, it eats that fruit, brother, eat this fruit, and it rejoices. It rejoices, it jumps out of joy as his brother is rejoicing the sweet apple, right? But at the same time, this bird when encounters a bitter fruit, I have this nimbori with me, right? And when this bird, lower bird encounters a bitter fruit, it eats it and it cries, it laments. You can see the twisted face of this brother. It's bitter fruit, right? So this is our present self. Hame kushya milti hai, hum kush ho jate hai. Hame dukh milte hai, hum dukhi ho jate hai. This is our present self, right? This is our present self. But on the contrary, we have another self, the higher bird. This higher bird, he is not interested in sweet fruit, 
Neither he is interested in sweet, sweet fruit nor he is interested in bitter fruit. He is simply witnessing the whole drama. He is just a detached spectator. He is always at peace and bliss, shantam and anandam state of being. This is his state of being. Therefore, this bird is always at rest. Now, tree model further states that what it states that if we want this lower bird to be one like higher bird, if we want this present self to merge and harmonize into the ideal self, then what should happen? What should happen? See, psychology could not answer. Psychology failed. Psychology staggered. It could not answer you how to merge two selves. Aaj aap jaise hai, aur aapko kal jaisa banna hai. This distance, this gap, how will you cover? Psychology cannot answer. But here is the psychoscience of Brahma Gyan that can answer this question. How can you merge and harmonize the lower bird with the higher bird? How can you harmonize the present self with the ideal self? One methodology, a practical methodology. Rishi says, Pratyaksha darshanam, Atma darshanam, Atma sakshatkaram. Means this lower bird must see the effulgent glory of the higher bird must have pratyaksha darshan of the higher bird. In spiritual lingo, lower bird is your mind, apka man. And this higher bird is your conscious self, your soul. So mind must have the direct perception of your soul, your atman. Atma sakshatkara should take place. And when this lower bird will see atman and will meditate upon it, the harmony will take place. This is a wonderful practical methodology in supreme psychoscience of Brahma which our present day psychology cannot offer. So here also we can see how beautifully the synthesis has taken place. Thank you brothers. Similarly, we have so many subjects. Physics, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, theory of relativity, quantum laws of mechanics. All these laws, all these theories if you, with a bit twist in understanding, if you analyze, analyze them, you will find that all these theories, all these laws are pointing to that higher consciousness, are pointing to that supreme science of self-realization, Brahma Gyan. This is happening. But time does not permit us to discuss all of them in details here. But this is for sure, in nutshell we can say that every stream of modern science must synthesize must and must synthesize with the higher science of consciousness, Brahma Gyan. Now let's talk about the second phase of our topic. Why spirituality must synthesize with science? Till now we have been discussing why science must sympathize with, synthesize with spirituality. But now the question is why spirituality must synthesize with science, practical science. To answer this, I will look upon our revered Guru Dev, Ashutosh Maharaji, who has been in himself a converging point where science and spirituality have always and always met. In 15 years of his constant guidance, I have learned that how spirituality can be seen in the light of modern science. Sri Maharaji has been such a tremendous powerhouse wherein, wherein we have found that all the spiritual concepts being solved in the light of modern science. One day, an inquisitive approached Gurudev Ashutosh Maharaji and asked him, Sri Krishna Bade or Sri Ram Bade? He asked this question. And His Holiness, believe me, in answer to this, Sri Maharaji did not provide any long Sanskritized explanation from scriptures. You know what Sri Maharaji did? He picked up from his table, side table, two objects of different weights, different masses. And you know what he did? He recreated, he recreated the famous Galileo's experiment of leaning tower of Pisa. What Galileo did? Galileo, from the right from the tower of Pisa, he dropped two stones of different masses. If you have physics, 
Galileo ne from the tower of Pisa he dropped two stones of different masses and he showed to the entire scientific society the time of descent of these two stones is independent of mass ye jo do stones hain jab ye zameen pe girte hain they fall at the same time and the because the time of descent of these stones is independent of their masses this is what galileo showed to the scientific society in 19th century i guess what his holiness did at that point in answer to this question he also picked up two two objects from his side table of different masses and he dropped them and told told that brother that man did you see that these two objects ye dono ek sath floor par gire despite their different masses in dono ka mass alag tha ek badi ball thi ek choti ball thi lekin still they fell on the floor at the same time why because the time of descent is independent of the mass masses their masses similarly said his holiness ashutosh maharaj ji that when that one universal consciousness manifests itself in human form be it rama or be it krishna then the descent of that universal consciousness from heavens to the earth is independent of all physical properties you cannot say that rama is greater or krishna is greater because both of them both of them have same equal divine potential they are independent of physical properties so how beautifully can you see the beauty can you see the how meticulously shri maharaj ji has brought scientific angle a relevant scientific angle to a spiritual concept and this is what he has been doing always you talk to him regarding divine eye divya drishti he will explain it to you through sim card technology you talk to him regarding sagar manthan of bhagavatam he will tell you the in depth friction between vigyan and adhyatma you talk to him regarding seven horses of surya dev hamare vedo mein sat horses seven horses ghodon ki baat ki gayi hai surya dev ke he tells you that this is vibgyor the visible spectrum of white light you talk to shri maharaj ji one day one person came to him and asked maharaj ji how come hirnakashipu stole the earth and hid it again into the ocean and where is ocean also exist and lies on the earth surface hamare vedo mein kaha jata hai purano mein ki hirnakashipu ne earth ko steal kiya churaya aur kisi samudra mein chupa diya the question was that how come the earth could be stolen first at first place and secondly usko steal karke samudra mein kaise chupa diya jabki samudra bhi dharti par hi prithvi ka hi ek part hai this was a very logical question we all were wondering what he is his holiness is going to going to reply you know what did he say he told that this is going this is an ornamental language alankarik bhasha hai ye this is an ornamental flowery language representation stealing doesn't mean stealing stealing means overpowering as today's scientists have overpowered earth with their inventions nuclear inventions atomic inventions they are overpowering earth and with one click they can devastate it completely similarly hinakashipu was one of them one of such a such a scientist who had overpowered earth so that was the language that was the mean, meaning latent into this phenomenon stealing the earth so beautifully and meticulously shri maharaj ji has been throwing light spiritual light scientific light to seemingly superstitious spiritual concepts jinko hum andhvishwas mante hain jinko hum spirituality ke ek tarike se backward superstitious concepts mante mante hain shri maharaj ji has been throwing spiritual has been showing showing throwing scientific modern light practical light to those concepts and above all brothers and sisters his holiness ashutosh maharaj ji has discovered for all of us the most scientific the most rational the most practical and comprehensive spirituality named as brahma gyan just give me full attention for another 5 minutes and let me show you tell you that how is brahma gyan is the science of sciences technology of technologies सी आप अपने इंटरनेट सर्विस प्रोवाइडर से ब्रॉडबैंड कनेक्शन लेते हैं इंटरनेट का आई नो यू हैव टेकन दैट कनेक्शन ओके आप इंटरनेट सर्विस प्रोवाइडर से ब्रॉडबैंड कनेक्शन लेते हैं सिमिलरली 
the spiritual scientist for example his holiness ashutosh maharaj through his technology of brahma gyan activates within your inner net aapka ye inner net hai antar jagat is your inner net and inside this inner net through the technology of brahma gyan his holiness activates cosmic band network aapke andar ek aisa activation ho jata hai pura jo aapka brain region hai this is very divine in literal sense not in the terms of neurology or neuroscience in terms of spiritual science this region is very very divine is region ke niche aapke jitna bhi regions hain that is materialistic that pulls you towards the world aapko worldly enjoyment materialistic enjoyment ke liye aapko inspire instigate karta hai but this portion instigates you inspires you towards higher growth towards higher perceptions higher goals right so this is very divine and through the technology of brahma gyan he activates this region which is called as cosmic cosmic band network and now this point right at the middle of your eyebrows this starts acting like google search engine how does google search engine operate what you do you basically type in certain keywords in your, in your search engine isn't it you type in certain keywords in your search engine and गूगल वालों ने ऐसे ऐसे एल्गोरिथम्स बनाए हुए हैं वेब क्रॉलर एक्सेट्रा एक्सेट्रा दैट कनेक्ट्स यू टू वर्ल्ड वाइड नेटवर्क एंड देन फ्लैशेज ए क्रॉस योर स्क्रीन आपकी जो स्क्रीन है कंप्यूटर स्क्रीन फ्लैशेज ए क्रॉस योर स्क्रीन द डिजायर्ड इन्फॉर्मेशन द डिजायर्ड इमेज डिजायर्ड वीडियोज सिमिलरली वॉट हैपन्स वेन हिज होलीनेस श्री आशुतोष मारे जी through the technology of brahma gyan activates this region cosmic band network then this and you start concentrating and meditating right here right here then what happens with you then you are connected to cosmic wide network of the universe google to aapko sirf ek world wide network se connection dilwata hai se connect karta hai but this portion this point when you start meditating here it connects you to the cosmic wide network of the universe and then this area of your forehead starts acting like your computer screen on the screen flashes across many many multifarious divine visions of divinity can you can you imagine aapka ye jo portion hai ये एक डिवाइन स्क्रीन की तरह एक्ट करता है ड्यूरिंग द टाइम ऑफ मेडिटेशन इनटू टू ब्रह्म ज्ञान एंड हेयर एट दिस स्क्रीन यू कैन सी वेरियस वेरियस डिवाइन विजन्स ऑफ गॉड मल्टीफेरियस ल्यूमिनस लाइट्स ऑफ डिविनिटी रेडिएट विद इन यू हियर आपके यहाँ बहुत से एक्सपीरियंसेस होते हैं डिवाइन विजन्स होते हैं गॉड इन ऑल इज ब्यूटी ऑल इज फॉर्म्स कम एंड गिट्स फ्लैश अक्रॉस हियर एंड यू कैन सी दैट एज यू सी videos and images on your computer screen similarly with closed eyes you can see all those divinities intuitive signals what is going to happen in future that also you can see right here on your screen such divinities intuitive signals visions you can see right here and at that point of time these visions basically elevate you to the higher consciousness and this is the science of brahma gyan brahma gyan is basically practically seeing practically experiencing practically experimenting upon god and his divinity brahma gyan is no talk brahma gyan ka bare ke bare mein abhi humne kitni baatein ki but this is not brahma gyan this is just an information about brahma gyan but the practical of a, a, a experience of brahma gyan is still awaiting for you Brahmagyan because it's no talk no argumentation no theory Brahmagyan is not in erecting temples and chanting mantras or beading telling the beads of a rosary no this is not Brahmagyan Brahmagyan is basically practically seeing practically beholding the divinity right here within yourself at the center cosmic center this is Brahmagyan or we can say Brahmagyan is spirituality synthesized with science Om is equal to mc square. This is Brahma Gyan. Brahma Gyan is spirituality synthesized with practical science. Seeing God is Brahma Gyan. So this is the beauty of synthesis of Brahma Gyan. And let me declare proudly here, brothers and sisters, that this synthesis of science and spirituality through Brahma Gyan has been very emphatically sustained by our revered Guru Dev, His Holiness Shri Ashutosh Maharaj Ji. 
today in the world arena he is such a perfect master believe me it's not that because i'm standing under the banner of djjs his organization that's why i'm saying so you make a research and you will find that in this world arena he is such a perfect master who wants each one of you to come to him with only one question one quest burning in your heart what is that quest aap kya quest lekar aaye inke paas i want to see god don't ask him tell me about god ask him show me god i want to see god i want to experience god i want an experiment on god this must be a quest and believe me he is such a perfect master who has got the spiritual potency to satisfy this quest your quest in affirmation he can satisfy millions of people across the universe believe me millions of people across the world have got today initiated into the science of brahma gyan by his holy grace and they are seeing the experiencing experiences of god right here on their screen divine screens and you can also be one of them let me ask you how many of you are physics students here raise your hands how many of you are mathematics students i saw earlier also how many of you are mtex here btex btex mtex cs how many of you are mbbs students raise your hands nobody you are okay how many of you are phd students here okay one or two and now let me ask you how many of you are spiritual science students here so students of brahma gyan overwhelming response wonderful and let me congratulate you brothers and sisters because by initiating into the science of brahma gyan by becoming the students of brahma gyan you know what you have done what you have achieved you have automatically become the students of supreme physics supreme mathematics supreme psycho science supreme medical science believe me you know why am i saying so because your physics at the most can tell you what is frequency modulation what is frequency modulation ek weak frequency signal hai uske upar aap ek high frequency signal ko modulate kar dein this is frequency modulation as per today's modern modern physics your physics can at the most tell you about frequency modulation but here is this divine master shri ashutosh mare ji who through his supreme physics of brahma gyan can what he can do aapke himmat hare man par aapke thake hue nirutsahit jeevan par divine frequency ki energies ko modulate kar kar aapko he gives you life worth living this is the supreme science of physics that you have already undertaken your mathematics today academic mathematics today at the most can tell you what is plus what is minus how to do plus how to do minus but here is this divine master who through his supreme mathematics of brahma gyan can teach you how to plus goodness and how to minus negativities from life your neuroscience neurology today must have told you about temporal lobe frontal lobe parietal lobe but here is this divine master who through his neuroscience supreme neuroscience of brahma gyan can install right here within your brain a lobe of wisdom lobe of vivek shakti that is the you know the beauty of brahma gyan so brothers and sisters why not those who have not raised their hands who are not the students of brahma gyan this is a clarion call for all of them this is my appeal humble appeal you also be one of them be the student of brahma gyan get connected to the supreme scientist of life and seek from him the eternal science science of sciences of self realization brahma gyan because once you get connected to this supreme scientist and the supreme science of brahma gyan what will happen you will also rejoice you will also declare like mathematician archimedes you know आर्कमडी से किंग हेरो ने एक प्रॉब्लम रखी थी उनके सामने एक प्रॉब्लम थी एक मैथमेटिकल पजल थी विच आर्कमडीज को नॉट सॉल्व फॉर डेज टुगेदर देन वन डे वाइल टेकिंग बाथ वाइल ही वॉज इन इज बाथिंग टब दैट सोल्यूशन फ्लैश्ड अक्रॉस इज माइंड एंड यू नो वॉट आर्कमडीज डिड वॉट इज 
shrieked out of joy. Eureka, Eureka, I found it, I found it. Similar would be your reaction when you'll get connected to the supreme scientist and his supreme science. You will say, Eureka, Eureka, we found him, we found him. And this would be your ultimate discovery, believe me, ultimate discovery of life. So brothers and sisters, wishing you all a successful journey towards this ultimate discovery. I give rest to my views. Thank you very much. Thank you.